Fuzzy here reminding you to be engaged in your community. Your vote counts. Vote your choice. Let's hear your voice. Today on the show, we'll introduce you to candidate for Platinum's Parish District Attorney, Gibby Andry, number 72. So let's talk to Mr. Andry and let's be informed. On to the show. Imaginarium Studios today with Plaquemines Parish DA candidate Gibby Andrew. So first of all, Mr. Andrew, thank you so much for taking the time to sit and talk to us today. We are definitely honored to have you in the studio. So just to go right in, when we are preparing to do these interviews, we started to realize that there are so many people of all ages who don't exactly understand what the DA does. Can you explain to us and to our viewers the role of district attorney in the ju judicial process? Well, first of all, I've got to say it's a pleasure to be here. And, and it really is great to watch y'all do what you do. Thank this, you. this is rock and roll. <laughs> y'all are making it happen. The, the, uh, what the DA does is I will be, if elected, the, mm -hmm. the, the attorney for Plaquemines Parish. And what I mean by that, not to represent the council or the president, but I'm the one that's the lawyer for every citizen mm -hmm. to make sure that we have a safe place to live. Right. And to build our community. And the way that that's done is, uh, uh, let's say a person commits a crime. A deputy arrests them. Charges are brought. Those charges are then brought to the DA's office. Uh, me and my staff will analyze uh, what the, the fact pattern is, what the, the crime was, the, the, the harm that was inflicted, and look to the criminal code to see if one of those elements, uh, all of the elements of a certain crime, or maybe more than one crime, are, are satisfied. And then we bring in front of a court those charges for the state, for the people of Plaquemines Parish. And it's not just about getting a, um, a conviction always, it's about making sure that you understand who the criminal is, or the accused I should say, who the victim is and what the harm is. Because right. the most important thing we want to do is to build a good community right. and, and keep our community safe. I definitely think that I have a better understanding of that now. So our next question for you is, what do you see as the biggest challenge facing the DA office and how do you plan to address it? I'm a second generation prosecutor. My dad was an assistant DA for 30 years. I grew up at the dinner table hearing all about it. And then I got to do it for 10 years myself. And uh, my, my former boss, Daryl Bubrig, who was the DA down here for a, a good bit of time, he was a very good DA. He allowed me to do every part of the office. So the, the first thing in, in running this campaign and challenging the incumbent that's been there for 40 years now is there's been a lot of waste lately. There was a, a, a brand new office that was built to the tune of five million dollars of our tax dollars. Well, we don't need that kind of space. Back when I was an, an assistant DA, we had four offices in, in the old courthouse. We got all of our business done. Mm -hmm. Now it's, it's about 15,000 square feet and there's a sun deck. Not one time in 30 years. I know, it's, it's crazy. There's a commercial kitchen in this new office and there's a sun deck. Now I'm a workaholic, and, and, but not one time in 30 years have I ever gotten up and said, I'm going to go work my butt off today on a sun deck. It just doesn't seem conducive. So I want right. to make sure that we don't waste money. Right. So I'm going to be going through uh, uh, the, the money that we take in, uh -huh. and I'm going to be making sure that we uh, use it if we need to use it, how right. we need to use it, and where we need to use it. The other thing that I'm going to do, though, 
is put it online. And my kids are a little bit older than you, but I've learned from my, my children how important it is to be transparent. Right. So it will be on the internet, at least on a quarterly basis, so you can see how our tax dollars are spent. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing that I'm going to do is to make sure that we go through the docket and worry about making people, uh, the community safer and not just putting people in jail to get a stat. Right. And I think finally, the most important thing to do is, unfortunately, the, what's happened with the, the present DA's office that we're going to change is that the same people are committing crimes over and over again. Right. And, and it's affecting our community in a bad way, especially down the road in some places. So we're going to make sure that those perpetrators that keep getting out don't keep getting out. Right. So yeah. that we can bring some kind of level of safety back to our community. Safety and like maintaining the waste of money. I think that does make a lot of sense. Good for you picking that up. So, um, what unique experiences or qualifications for the position have you have prepared you to lead the DA office? Well, I've been practicing law for 30 years. Mm -hmm. uh, I was also an assistant DA for 10 years. I got to handle every criminal appeal, every post-conviction, every habeas corpus. I got to do felonies, uh, that is, when crimes are punishable by time of six months or more in jail, mm -hmm. uh, in both divisions. I got to do misdemeanors as well. And the entire time, I represented the school board for 10 years, from 1999 to 2008. Uh, so I've got the experience doing all those different things. So that you can understand what that means, is that from the time a case came in and it was being investigated, all the way through arguing to the Louisiana Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. I'm the only person that did that. Right. That did all of those things for a 10 year period. And none of the candidates right now have done that at all, including the, the DA that's, that's been there for 40 years. He hadn't argued before the Louisiana Supreme Court. Talk about scary when you get up in front of all of those justices Sounds and they're like looking it. down on you. Yeah. Uh, so that's the, ne the next thing that I did is I got to teach law school at Tulane. For, for 16 oh, years. Really? I got to teach third years, and it's the last year of law school, how to put on a trial. Prepare for and put on a trial, both a civil trial and a criminal trial. So uh, I think that I've developed uh, an understanding of how the process works. Yeah. I think I'll be able to apply it to the people that work with me and for me, uh -huh. and, and for us, for the community, to make our place safer. So next, can you walk us through like the whole process? So like once an arrest has been made, um, what happens next and then when does the district attorney come into play? Good question. And it's really pretty uh, much kind of like you see on TV. I don't know if, it, I know that everybody's going away from the network TV now, yeah. but there was always law and order on. Yeah. It's on reruns now. Well, what'll happen is uh, someone will commit a crime. Right. And sometimes it's a person that's a bad person that does bad things to other people. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes it's a, a lesser crime where they, they make a dumb mistake and they're otherwise good people. So the deputy arrests them. Mm -hmm. They bring them in and charge them with a certain crime based on what they see in the investigation that they do. So what we then do is we get that file in mm -hmm. that's got evidence in it, might have photographs. Right. We'll talk to the deputy. If there's mm -hmm. further information that's needed, we'll send an investigator from the DA's office out to, to investigate, talk to the people involved mm -hmm. that, that were victims, that were witnesses. And, and, and if we need experts to, to kind of put things together, we'll bring them in. And then we decide whether it's a case that we can uh, put on. Is it something that the deputies feel strongly about that, that the person arrested has been a problem in the community and, and kind of brings everybody else down from having a safe time? If that's the case, then we'll prosecute. Right. And, and we'll move forward by putting on a trial if necessary. Mm -hmm. What happens sometimes, though, is... 
let's say that a person commits a robbery right. with a gun. Well, that's bad. Mm -hmm. It doesn't get much worse than that where people still stay alive. If that happens, well, we're going to make sure that that person doesn't and isn't around here anymore. Mm -hmm. We're going to offer them a, a time. Let's say that they get 20 years if convicted. We might say, look, we'll give you 18 years, uh, and then that way we don't need to go through the expensive trial, don't need to put the victims on, and if they don't take it, well, then we go to trial and have a jury convict them, and then they get to go live in a prison someplace. Right. But we also, at the same time, have to decide on, on a lesser crime if someone just makes a bad mistake. Right. Now, is that someone that we want to send away and become a stat, or do we want to figure out how to help them? Right. And maybe uh, through, through some type of nonprofits, if it's anger management, if it's drugs, is it something that we can do to make them uh, uh, rehabilitate them? Uh, if it's uh, problems at home, can we have ministers involved uh, that, that'll go in and kind of help the, the, the person and, and the family improve themselves? For all of us, we're going to do that. Right. We're, we're not interested in just putting everybody in jail because it looks good and makes us feel strong. Uh-uh. It's about making our community better. Thank you. That actually that helped me better my understanding a lot more. So we have just one more question for you. Okay. This is a question that we ask every guest that comes on to the show. So if you could travel back in time and give yourself advice at the age of 16, what advice would you give yourself? I thought about this question. And this is the kind of question that you can go down so many avenues to answer. Right. And someday you'll know exactly what I mean when you're asked this question. I think the biggest thing is to be patient and enjoy what it is that you're doing at the time. Instead of worrying about and preparing for the next thing, be a little bit more content at, at uh, enjoying what it is that you're going through at the time. If it's in school, make sure you're enjoying that class more. Make sure you're enjoying the people that are around you more. If, it, if it's coming to this hip jive place, it, make sure you're having fun mm -hmm. and, because you're going to be uh, grown up before you know it. And then you know what us grown ups do? We spend all of our waking moments trying to be kids again. Right. So enjoy it. Yeah. Worry about the present instead of what's coming next. Right. That is very good advice. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Gibby Andrew. This interview has been very insightful. I feel like I definitely understand a bit more now, and hopefully everybody else does too. Um, we know how busy you are, so we're really grateful that you could take the time to join us today, and we hope that you'll come back and visit us soon. Thank you very much. This was awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you.